This is Molly K. Hope y'all are well. I apologize for being AWOL on my um, program that I have been using for the past year to make videos upgraded. And when it upgraded, is it, it just didn't work well. It didn't work at all. So I couldn't make videos. And apparently they have gone back to the older version. So I'm okay for now. But, you know, it's just a sign of the times. Everything is updating and preparing basically to dump us offline. So I'm anticipating all types of technological issues over the next couple of months. You should as well. Um, and just plan accordingly. Again, if there are things on the internet that you want, that you need, that you want to have proof of, you may want to download those things and put them someplace safely off of a, a computer, maybe on a hard drive or something, or um, uh, one of those little portable um, flash drives because uh, things are getting real dicey and we never know when the lights are going to go out, when there's going to be an EMP strike, when they just take the internet down and you know, the boogeyman says, oh, um, the terrorists did it. So we don't we don't know what the hell is going to happen or who's going to do it. All we know is we're going to be inconvenienced and we're the collateral damage. So if you keep that mindset and just be prepared, to me, it doesn't matter who does it. The thing that is important is that it's being done. So that should be your focus uh, first and foremost. So I want to bring this um, story uh, to you from Reuters. It came out on June the 2nd, but it's really important because it demonstrates how other nations that are planning to be around post-2025 are preparing for their people to be here. And of course, every nation is going to experience some collateral damage because they've intentionally put us together um, or, or put these economies together, and then now they have to rip them apart so they can create this final kingdom before um, everything ends. So um, let me share this story with you. It says China food security law comes into force, aims for absolute self-sufficiency. So it says China's first food security law aimed at achieving absolute self-sufficiency in staple grains came into effect on Saturday, reinforcing, and this, this will be June the 3rd, so reinforcing efforts by the world's biggest agriculture importer to lower its reliance on overseas purchases. The law provides a legal framework for existing legal guidance by the Communist Party for local governments and the agricultural industry to raise food production. So China is planning on raising their food production. Meanwhile, the rich people are buying up farms, buying up land around lakes. They are um, spraying shit in the air, killing our trees, um, killing the grass, making stuff don't grow. Um, they're uh, creating all sorts of local ordinances where you can't grow food in your yard, where you have to have certain type of landscaping. Basically, a lot of communities across the country are turning into HOAs. The government, local governments are riding around seeing what people are growing. If they're trying to produce food on their own, they're killing off livestock in mass so that there are supply chain shortages. Then, you know, over the last couple of years, we had these food processing plants just burning down. Nobody thought nothing about it, um, especially the organic uh, food processors. A lot of them were destroyed during the pandemic um, when everybody was inside and not really paying attention to what was happening. And as of late, uh, there were, have been a lot of train spills with hazardous chemicals near waterways and in, um, uh, huge agricultural communities. And then you think about all the bridges that have been hit by barges and, um, you know, where uh, large quantities of imports or exports um, are moved at any particular time. So there are a lot of things going on in this country 
that would signify shortages, whether it is intentional, whether it's man-made, or whether it is the most high allowing famine to hit. It's, it's here, and you can see it if you have eyes to see and ears to hear. People are talking about it. Um, unfortunately, a lot of people are not paying attention to what's going on in other countries. But to me, um, this is just another sign that Babylon is going to fall. It's going to be utterly destroyed, and it is going to be desolate. So um, as we go through these troubled times, no matter what continent you're on, no matter what country you're in, you're going to have to experience, you're going to experience some issues. Um, e even if it just comes from cloud seeding, uh, tampering with frequencies that impact weather, you could or could not have a growing season. So we all have to be prepared and have alternative means to survive because only the the fittest uh, mentally and spiritually will survive. Um, you, can't, you know, physically it's a hit or miss, um, but as hot as it is and uh, as uh, bad as the food supply chain is going to be soon, uh, a lot of people are not going to be here. And if they are here, they're going to be crazy because they're going to have to eat the food of the Gentiles. Um, that come from you know other places so anyway y'all just keep prepping keep prepping keep prepping i can't stress it enough so it says the law provides a legal framework it's law that they create a food plan um for existing guidance from the communist party for local governments now local governments they have a national plan but local governments are also being drafted into the um agricultural plans for the future and it says the agricultural industry to raise food production although it did not give details on the law on how the law will be implemented of course they're not going to give you details because they don't want to tell folks what they're going to do so it says the law includes protection of farmland from being converted to other uses protecting germplasm resources and preventing wastage so it says passed just six months ago um, after his first reading, the rush to adopt the food security law reflects China's urgency to resolve issues that have curbed production, such as a lack of arable land and water resources, labor shortages, and a lack of agricultural technology. The law holds central and provincial governments accountable for incorporating food security into their economic and development plans, ensuring that Food supply remains a top priority in the country that has a painful history of famine. I feel like they're saying something without saying something. So it says the party will lead the implementation of a national food security strategy. We don't have that in America. We don't have that. Nobody's talking about that. Nobody is saying everybody needs to be trying to figure out how they're going to eat because hard times are coming. So... To me, in my mind, because we require food, water, and shelter to survive, those are just basic human necessities. Because this nation is not talking about that, although we are, you know, we got the world ablaze with war, signifies to me that the Deagle report is true. It, is, it demonstrates how so many people are going to perish because so many people are not going to be prepared for what's coming and it seems like people in the cities are going to be impacted the most because they are crammed on top of each other they're not going to be able to leave they won't be able to move there won't be any food coming in or going out and it's just easy to you know do stuff to people i'll just say that if that's that's the goal um and it seems like that is the goal for us not to have much fight over what we do have, few resources we do have, and the survival of the fittest, the purge, um, leaving the world behind. It's, it's going to be a real thing. So it says the party will lead the implementation of a national food security strategy that puts China first by importing moderately. That means imports are going to decrease, which means our 
food supply may um, food may the price of food may go down significantly for a little while because there will be an excess of the things that would have been um, exported. So farmers are going to find themselves in a bad situation. They're going to be losing money because what they used to sell overseas will no longer be going overseas. Um, you know, for us, we may get a little small bump because we may be able to buy more, but eventually a lot of people are going to go out of business because they're no lot their largest um, exporter or purchases of exports will no longer be purchasing from them. So either way, um, from a business perspective, this is not good for America and for a lot of other nations who have done business with China where food is concerned. And if the nation is not in a good place economically, it's bad for the people. The people are always going to be collateral damage. So that's what we have to be reminded of. So it says um, they're also going to be using advances in science and technology to boost production according to a provision in the law. That means they're going to be eating genetically modified stuff. And I just pray the most high takes us out of here because I'm telling you, I, I have really been experiencing a lot of stomach issues lately because of just the stuff that we usually buy in the store. Like food just is not the same. And so it is imperative that you try to grow your own stuff or eat locally from people that you know, or at least people in your community who's not mass producing stuff because um, they're like literally making us sick and it's real bad. So it says, it shall adhere to the principle of storing grain in the ground and using technology to improve grain production, it said, to ensure basic, and I guess this is national self-sufficiency in cereal grains and absolute self-sufficiency in staple grains for food use. And I'm assuming that this is a national plan, a national strategy, but I'm pretty sure probably local communities and even individuals will also have a responsibility to make sure they don't starve to death because you can't be the number one country in the world and most of your people are deceased. This is common sense. So um, I don't know. I don't even know what's wrong with people in this country. They're just doggone stupid. I feel like some days I'm talking to cows ch chewing on cud. Um, they people just you talk to them, they just look at you like you're crazy. Um, it's very disheartening. Anyway, it says all. It also uh, stipulates this law. Also stipulates the formation of a national grain emergency plan and a food security monitoring system. Now, ain't nobody talking about this in America, but they're talking about this in China. This is how you know China is going to be the head of the new global order. And who is, whoever is is on deck with Team China, or since they've been chosen to lead the last kingdom, apparently, um, it, it also is a sign that America is not being um, touted as the leader. So what, whatever is going on, you can see globally that there is a shift of who's creating um, leadership or who is uh, developing a model for other nations to follow. It's not America. So again, if you are here, you have to be prepared to take care of yourself. You have to be smarter than everybody else. You have to have a way to protect what you have. You have to be in a community of people who are like-minded or have some proximity to similar people. And, you know, just in my personal opinion, if you outside of the South, you might be in danger. Um, I'm just saying it, it because, uh, you know, a lot of people here are self-sufficient. They know how to grow stuff. They know how to hunt. Now, the issue is if they're trying to contaminate what we do have so that we can't do it, it, it may make life a challenge as well. So it doesn't necessarily mean that because you're in the South, you're going to fare better. But at least people around here got some common, a little common sense. They know how to survive. A lot of people in these big cities do not know how to survive. and They're going to be in trouble 
when all these calamities hit at one time. And because we don't have a national um, plan, the plan is to just let chaos happen. We kill each other, we die off, and then whatever's left, you come under submission of the new world order. I mean, that's the skinny of it. I didn't go into all the little other details about what's happening with the currency and economic collapse and the uh, weather issues that we've been having. You see it's flooding everywhere. So shoot, you don't even know if you save some seeds, you might not survive because they dumping water in places where you usually would get your produce from, like the Midwest, all those storms. That means grain production is going to be impacted, corn, um, soybeans, a lot of things that we rely on, even livestock damaged, gone because of these um, massive uh, weather swings and huge, you know, either it's, it's fire, drought, or extreme water, excessive rain. So we are going to be experiencing a lot of famine for a lot of different reasons. And um, if you're not planning yourself, if they're planning a national grain emergency plan and a food security monitor system, you should be having that at your own house. I'm just keeping a buck. You should be having one at your house. Um, it don't matter what nobody else do in your community. You should have one for yourself. And and uh, we'll talk about what, what you need to do and how you need to be acting when um, everything hits the fan and you're here and you're stuck and people don't have. You need to be acting like your neighbors, honey. If your neighbors acting like they don't know where they're going to get nothing to eat, you need to be outside acting like somebody from your house need to be doing the same thing. Somebody need to be staying at your house to protect them with stuff you do have. But, you know, there's going to be an art to being destitute, um, looking destitute when you're not necessarily destitute. And uh, we're going to have to talk about those things, especially for those of us who are prepared and we're living um, in the zombie apocalypse now where people are just not really understanding the significance of what's coming so it said China expanded the definition of coarse grains, which is something that we all need to have to include millets and oats, in addition to sorghum, barley, buckwheat, mung beans, and potatoes. All these things you can use to make bread. So, um, or, or cakes like pancakes, um, flatbreads. Uh, if you have a grinder, like a hand crank grinder, you don't need an electric anything. You got to go back to the basics like old people did in the old days. If you have those, you can do a whole lot of things. Um, and so these types of grains are good to have. Even if you have them and you keep them in buckets dry, you can do, um, you, you can plant these things later and get them to grow and use them to have wheat. Um, or, uh, you know, make bread, make pancakes, make some type of starchy thing for you to eat. Or you can put it in soup. Grains refer to wheat, rice, corn, soybeans, and coarse grains. The other things, even if you do not um, plan to do anything with them now, you should have them put up in buckets and containers um, and store uh, in bags with uh, the air taken out of them, uh, of course, free them, freeze them before you put them away and then let them thaw so you can kill any bugs or anything in them. And put that stuff away so that you will have them when you need them. So it says entities who violate the law may face a fine ranging from 20,000 yuan to 2, to 2 million yuan, while individual offenders may be slapped with fines between 20,000 yuan and 200,000 yuan. So even individuals who are not participating in the national uh, emergency plan and the food security monitoring system could be fine. So use it as a data point, family. Um, everybody is preparing, and I think you should take it as a sign that they are preparing and talking about it and making announcements, and this country is not. All we're talking about is threats, what people can do to us, what people can do to us, what's going to happen. We got all the, the, all the, every boogeyman, the boogeyman is so busy 
doing everything and planning everything and could be doing everything that we're not worried about or paying attention to not i'm not going to use the term worried we're not paying attention to what other nations are doing nations who are um coming against uh this this nation in order to bring it down for this last world order so um the gradual demolition continues other nations are preparing to be around and this nation is not other nations are preparing people this nation is not so you gotta know this is mystery babylon you gotta know this place is going to be destroyed and you gotta know a lot of people are not going to be around post 2025 and a lot of those people will be african-american black people unless the most high comes in and intervenes or you know he may not because his will may be for a lot of us to not be here um simply because we don't hear his voice because we're disobedient, maybe because our hearts are hardened. I know that he doesn't want anyone to perish, but to have everlasting life. But there are some people who are just not getting it. And, um, you know, a lot of people are gonna perish from, from starvation. Before anything happens, people are gonna starve. So. You know, there's only a limited amount of time people can live without food. And I think that you should um, take this into consideration and prepare accordingly. Have a plan, because if you do not have a plan, the adversary has a plan for you. And that plan is death. That plan is detention. That plan is poison food. That plan is, um, you know, starvation. So you got to quickly. We don't have much time. While your money is still good, while prices are still reasonable, while they have not pulled the roof fully from under us, while there is still daylight, continue to prepare. Put away what you can, how you can, be quiet about it. Um, you know, if you're awakened, warn people, but don't keep on beating a dead horse. People sometimes, they need a quick, you know, kick up the behind to wake up and that's going to be the only thing that wakes up a large number of people in this country um so keep prepping keep praying keep seeking the most high obey those laws statutes and commandments make sure you are repenting daily for sins of commission and sins of omission ask them that the most high um, ask that his will be done and just pray that you're found worthy to escape what's coming because there are a lot of things coming. All right, y'all. This is Marla K. Love y'all. And I am out.